All right, 11 o'clock, let's get going. Uh, so this week's guest is uh, James Tom from um, Aberdeen New Dawn. Uh, but before we um, talk to him, I'm going to run through a few bits of news this week. There's not a huge amount happened, but Thomas Lloyd Energy Impact is definitely a big one. Uh, and then the investment company announced something this morning, and so did Civitas. So I think that's probably worth just mentioning those two. Um, Thomas Lloyd Energy Impact first. Um, that's the whole history of the fund. Um, and as we know, it's been suspended now since um, April. Uh, so at the moment, it's showing up as the only fund in the sector on the premium. But uh, obviously, that's um, unlikely to be the case when it starts trading again, if it ever does. So it's, um, as I say, been suspended since the 24th of April. And the problem is that it hasn't financed its accounts. Um, and there is still, despite the update they released this week, there's still no date for when that's going to happen. They are holding an annual general meeting, so I think they have to. Um, but the plan is that that will just be adjourned halfway through. Um, and one of the things that they won't get to in the course of that meeting is a continuation vote. So they have to have a continuation vote because they promised that they would do if they hadn't invested 75% of the IPO proceeds, and that hasn't happened. So there will be a continu continuation vote at some point, but it won't happen at that meeting. It will happen at the meeting that comes when the accounts are finally published, wherever that is. Um, so to brief history, because we've talked about this before, raised $150 million, um, but some of that came from the UK government. Um, and at the time, we got quite excited about that, but they'll probably <laughs> be reluctant to do something like this again. Um, and there also was a stock swap for um, a stake in this thing called Solar Arise, which is an Indian solar developer. And um, they used some of the cash that they raised to buy the bank. So that's, they know, 100% of that. And then they raised a little bit more money last November, 103. So one of the last sort of people to actually manage to, to raise any money in the sector. Um, and then they also bought uh, a stake in a Philippine solar um, project and also a Vietnamese one, which is gradually rolling out um, investments, signing off with a small rooftop asset here. Um, but I said that that's not enough to deploy all of the money. So Solar Arise came with six operational solar plants, um, but the word everything's gone wrong is with the construction asset, um, which is uh, imagining a Rewa Ultra Mega Solar Park. Um, but there is actually a solar park of that name in existence already, which is one of the largest in India. So I, I think that what they must be doing is building an extension to that. I think I've never seen that written down anywhere, but that's, that's what it must be. Um, the way the structure works, so Thomas Lloyd owns 100% of Solar Rise, and Solar Rise owns uh, a special purpose vehicle, SPV, dedicated to this project. And the cost of the project was estimated at just shy of $80 million in 2021. And they were going to fund most of that with debt. Um, so a small equity injection from Solar Rise into that special purpose vehicle, and then also bank debt coming in there as well to, to fund everything. Um, and they've got the debt all agreed. So the construction work started, pre-construction work started in 2022. Um, we're not sure how far it's got, um, but I, I think basically they haven't got anywhere near putting kit on the site yet. They were just talking about putting sort of things like digging the traces to put the grid connections in and that sort of stuff and maybe leveling the land. Um, the problem, I think, the principal problem, I think, because the whole project's um, cost overrun, uh, is that there's been a huge leap in the cost to them of solar modules. And that's largely down to India putting uh, a tariff on those in April 22. But that happened in April 2022, so they've known about this for a long time. Um, they've just told the board that if they want to go ahead with this project, it's going to cost them another $50 million of equity funding to go into that special purpose vehicle. Solar Rise hasn't got that much money within it. So Thomas Lloyd would need to put $44 million into Solar Rise to make that happen. And then even when they did it, when they built the whole thing out, they reckon that the net present value of the project would be zero. So really probably not a good idea, therefore. If they pull out, because the banks have been arranged and there are all sorts of things agreed, the special purpose vehicle has got liabilities of $33 million. Um, and the big thing is they say that that debt is non recourse to solar rise. So basically, um, whoever they owe the money to can't come after solar rise for that money. 
So they can let the special purpose vehicle go bust, and that seems to be what they're aiming to do. Um, and that would mean a write off of about $7 million, just over $7 million. There's 6 million of equity that they will be put into the project through Solar Rise, and another 1.2 of bank guarantees that they're going to have to pick up. Um, so nobody told the board this, allegedly. I mean, because we didn't find out about it. And I think the board made an announcement straight away until April 2023, when it became time to actually sell, uh, sign the um, contracts to get the whole thing built. But it seems to me that the whole thing, cost over I mean, you were obvious well before that. So there's some kind of failure there. It looks most likely. I mean, I think we have to um, blame the the manager, definitely, um, for, for not being on top of the situation, whether it was the, the locals were not keeping them properly informed. Uh, we don't know. The, the manager did make a bid fuss um, at the end of last year that it, it hired more senior people. And we don't know whether that meant that they weren't didn't have those staff in place beforehand. Um, and presumably, you also have to question whether the board were properly on top of things or not. Um, what I think is that shareholders are going to be so upset by this that whatever happens, that they're, they're going to vote against continuation. So the whole thing will be wound up and pretty short lived and quite a sad story. Uh, but there we go. I think it is probably served. Um, investment Company is one of the oldest investment trusts in existence. Um, and it's tiny. Uh, it's sort of languished in a sort of dusty corner for a long time. Um, and it trades on a largest discount, but it's been planned to reinvent itself for a while. And we actually got detailed proposals of how that's going to work today. So Chelberton are going to take on the uh, management contract and it's going to be run to um, in a small cap growth objective. There's a 100% tender offer at asset value, so asset value less costs, a former asset value, FAB. Um, and the, the thing, the existing market cap is about 15 million pounds. Um, there's placing or an offer subscription for another 6 million shares, which could raise about 20. Um, and then when they've done all that, there's going to be a five for one share split to make the whole thing a bit more liquid. All of that, tick, 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 I'm quite happy with. What I'm not quite happy with uh, is that the David Horner, who's the um, lead manager or the, the lead person at Chelberton, is going to go onto the board of this. Uh, it's really rare now that managers go on boards, and, and definitely it tends to be a legacy of, of olden times. It's not the sort of thing that tends to be done. Um, I just don't see the need for it, so I, I, I do object to that. And the other thing I've been saying for a long time, it, it just needs to be called something else, because if you try and Google the investment company, <laughs> you're never ever going to find it. You, know, you can't find the website, can't find anything. Uh, even in our site, it's, it's really quite hard to find, uh, unless you know where um, where to go and look for it, which set to go and look for it. And, um, it maybe it's inflexible investment. I'm guessing it was going to switch to UK small cap going forwards, but there we go. So yes. Um, yeah, somebody else has agreed with me there about the changing the name. I agree, it's impossible to search for. Cool. Um, that's that one. And then finally, Suitas. I'm not going to sort of pull Richard in and hand over to him now because it's very, very brief here. Um, obviously, we know that the things be bid for. What happened today was um, they brought forward the closing date of the offer from 21st of July to 23rd of June. They haven't really got any new acceptances. Well, they haven't announced anything that um, looks exciting, but they have been busy buying shares in the market uh, because the shares are trading just below the offer price of ATP. So they now own 17%. Obviously, that's nowhere near enough to, to win the day. Um, and I'm not sure if they pulled it forward just to knock the idea on the head because actually everybody's told them where, um, where to get off or whether they do think that People are going to cave, and the, the, the explanation they've given is that um, people want their money faster. I think I just don't rather have my shares. Thank you very much. So we see what happens. Um, I still think we should be rejecting this offer. There we go. And um, that's all the news that I had.